Hey everybody, it's Wesley. I'm the school programs coordinator here at the North Carolina Zoo and we are so excited to have all of you join us today virtually for our zoo classroom. Now our zoo classroom today is going to be all about life cycles and we're going to focus mostly on frog and amphibian life cycles. But before I get started, just a couple of quick things to make sure that we have a fun, safe, and interactive day today. And the first thing is that you were muted on purpose when you came into the chat to, or into the classroom today. We have what, Nikki, over 200-ish people that are signed in right now. 327. 327 people signed in right now. So if everybody was unmuted, it would just be so much chatter. So make sure that we can hear me, that everybody is muted. But that doesn't mean that you can't talk to us and interact with us. There's two different kind of ways that you can interact with us. One is if we ask you a question, you can answer it in the chat box. Now, the chat box right now is open so that everybody can see each other. But if the chat box gets too filled and people are treating it um, poor, poorly or they're just throwing stuff out there to say things, we can make that private. And so nobody will be able to see what other people are saying. We don't wanna to have to do that. So please be respectful and make sure when you're using the chat box, you're mostly just answering what we're going, what, what we're talking about. Now, if you have any questions, we do have our Q and A. So make sure to send your questions for me into the Q and A box. Um, we do have both up, so we are able to see both. So sometimes if you forget to put it one in the other, we're still able to see them. But if you could try, the Q&A box is for your questions for us, and the chat is for our questions to you to answer. All right? First and foremost, we wanted to start this day off by um, giving a quick shout out because uh, I believe it was last Friday. It's been, it's been very stressful around here at the North Carolina Zoo. And last Friday, um, Mrs. Smith from Franklin Academy sent us a video of her and all the other second grade teachers put together to create a virtual trip to the North Carolina Zoo for their students. And we sent it out to everybody at the zoo and it just really made our day. So thank you to the second grade teachers at Franklin Academy. We're pretty sure there's a bunch of you on here today too with students. Hello from everybody at the zoo and thank you for sharing that for us, um, with us. Now we also saw a couple of shout outs out there to Wilmington Prep and Archdale Elementary and things were just going by so fast that we weren't able to catch everything. But we are so excited that whether you're part of a public school, whether you're homeschool or whether you're Wendy and you're 45 years old and you're just hanging out and wanting to learn stuff, we're super excited to have you all here today. All right. Don't forget about telling them if they miss this one or oh, miss any of the other ones. Great. Do. Thank you, Nikki. So I have a bunch of people helping me today. First and foremost, Nikki is behind the camera. We're the only two that are actually here at the zoo. So everybody say hi to Nikki. We also have uh, several people at their homes answering questions remotely for you that are part of the North Carolina Zoo. So if you get something answered by Wendy or Steve or Linda and maybe Beth and eventually as well, that is one of our employees at the North Carolina Zoo. And so they're here to help us out since we have so many people asking questions. Um, if you miss part of this though, we will be putting it on our YouTube and you will be able to see it afterwards. So we had one person ask us that. So hopefully that will help them make sure that they get to see it. All right, now that we have got <laughs> out of breath, right? <laughs> now that we have that covered, let's get into some cool stuff, all right? So like I said today, we're gonna learn about from eggs to legs, learn all about how metamorphosis happens. Now, does everybody know what metamorphosis is? Can anybody tell me kind of like a more general term for what metamorphosis means? And I'm just looking for one word, really, but because that, that big long word kind of just means one thing. Change, changing, grows. Yep, lots of changes. Great job, yes. yeah. So it just means change. And usually when we think of our favorite animals. And if you want to, you can throw your, um, your throw your favorite animal, type your favorite Don't animal in our chat. Don't <laughs> throw your favorite animal. Uh, type your favorite animal in the chat box. But we are, we're usually when we lion, like- Not lion, not, yep. Go, go flip 
the world's best. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I see an opossum from over yeah, here. Well, yes. Oh, my <laughs> Sorry, my oh man. Oh, I think some is narwhal. <laughs> <gasps> it's already gone, but whoever said whoever I said know. narwhal, that's my favorite oh. animal too. Giraffe, sloth, tiger, cats. Giraffe, yeah. cats, yeah. tigers, oh, giraffe, oh, sloth, jellyfish. jellyfish. Ooh, they do have a really cool life cycle yeah. though, so it's a little bit different. Where's I see owl? Oh my gosh. And if you see me look over here, I'm looking to a screen that has stuff popping up. Turtles and Ooh, yeah, great job, everybody. Um, so when we think of our favorite animals, like I said, mine's the narwhal, so twin out there. Um, <laughs> we they usually go through a pretty boring life cycle, uh, except for jellyfish, they go through a really new, cool one, but we aren't going to talk about it today. Uh, <laughs> they go through a really like kind of boring life cycle where they're born. They look pretty much how they're going to look their whole entire life. They make it look a little bit different. So like when I was born, I had bright blonde hair, like white blonde hair, basically. And as I grew up, it started to darken. I started to get taller, but I still looked like me um, throughout my stages. Um, as an, and now as an adult, I still look kind of like I did. You could look at those baby pictures, tell them it's me as an adult. So all of the kind of big animals or those charismatic animals usually go through kind of that simple life cycle. All mammals, all birds, all fish, all reptiles, and even some invertebrates, many invertebrates, go through kind of a simple growth life cycle where they look very similar as young and then they just kind of grow and get bigger. So we're not going to talk about any of those animals today. We're going to talk about those animals today that go through that magical metamorphosis, that huge change. And specifically, we're going to talk about frogs and amphibians. Now, first, before we dive into that, what makes an amphibian an amphibian? Can anybody tell me any characteristics about an amphibian that make it an amphibian? Eggs, slimy skin, cold blooded. Nice. Great. Great job. Water so, and land. Water and land, that and dual water. life cycle. Skin. And amphibian actually and means double life, basically, mm -hmm. dual yes. life. So, great job, everybody. Um, cold blooded, they lay gills eggs, they have uh, gills and lungs throughout their life, um, they have special slimy skin. Um, and so when we were talking about that first stage of their life cycle, when you're talking about that they lay eggs, can anybody describe to me kind of what amphibians eggs are like? How are they different than say, birds eggs and reptile eggs? Well, eggs clear, soft, jelly-like, no shell, slimy, no shell. Sorry, I can't, the, the names are going by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> we, my eyes don't see as well as yours. So we love sure. trying to call out names, but sometimes when we have a ton of people, it's just yeah. hoo, hoo, flying by. <laughs> but so if you said, th those were great answers though. Clumps, um, they're clear, um, they're slimy, there's not really a shell. Those are all correct answers. So the eggs of an amphibian are kind of these jelly gelatinous um, eggs, and they do kind of look like this. Now, one thing that's kind of hard is that not all of them lay in clumps. And in fact, that's one of the ways that you can tell a toad from a frog is how their eggs are laid. So a frog does these nice clumps, just like this, but a toad actually lays it in the strings. And it's really interesting to watch. So they're all side by side by side by side. But for most of them, it's kind of this clumpy this clumpiness. And they are, they're kind of jelly and squishy. So those eggs are laid in where? Where do the amphibians lay their eggs? Do they lay them in trees? Do they, well, <laughs> some do, but for the most part, do they lay them in, in the tops of trees? Do they lay water, them in the ground? Water, water, yep. Yeah, great job. So they lay them in the water more, more like more often than not. There are some that actually create kind of these foam nests and but it's still contained in some sort of water um, and then they drop into the uh, when they're the next stage they drop into the water so because 
uh, amphibians lay their eggs in water, they do have to be around water. And though the next stage of their life lives in the water. So once that egg, sometimes it can take a couple weeks, sometimes it can take a couple days. Once that egg hatches, what comes out of the egg? What's our next stage? Dead balls. Cook family, you got it right? Pinky. Cook family, yeah. pinky. Oh, somebody said pollywog. Pollywog. Okay, so. Depends on where you're from. So tadpole, I see a lot of tadpoles going yep. through. Very good. Nice. I can read the, I can, for some reason I can't read the names, but I can read. The, oh, somebody asked how many eggs is a frog like? Oh, great question. I will come right back to that. So um, <laughs> you're all right. Our tadpole, that's our next stage. And pollywog is also a name for that. It's just kind of what we call a colloquialism. <laughs> I always say, say that. that times, yeah, I always say <laughs> that word wrong. So I have to like, Colloquial, Collo <laughs> see, I just said it wrong. All right, try to say that. Colloquialism. <laughs> so it just basically means that um, in a specific area, it's something that they they say around there, but they may not say in other places. So, like in Rhode Island, they call a water fountain a bubble. So, uh, <laughs> so that would be a colloquialism as well. But it is still it is still correct. Um, so my friend was asking, um, how many eggs does a frog lay? Does anyone want to guess how many frags, frags frags an egg can lay? <laughs> how many eggs a frog can lay? I had to do this earlier, so I'm just tongue tied today. Let's see how many eggs you think. 1, 200, 500, 100, Oh my goodness! Oh wow, one million. <laughs> Poor frog. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a lot of different numbers. So anywhere from, uh, it seems like we're at least at a couple hundred to a couple of thousand. Um, so it does vary based on how much they can lay at that point in time. But so they may only lay a hundred, they may only lay a thousand, but most of the time they can lay up to 50,000 eggs. Wow. 50,000 eggs. Yes. Um, so they are, now you're making me second guess that. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they can lay tons and tons and tons and tons of eggs. Now that may not all be at the same time, but that can be in the same air, like the same uh, uh, season basically. So they, they are able to lay thousands of eggs basically. Um, and that means that most of the time those don't all get to the full stage of their life so that's why they have to lay so many eggs because they're hoping that they'll lay a bunch and then at least some of them will get to adulthood so um being able to lay tons and tons and tons of eggs is pretty amazing so our tadpole it is um you get lots of numbers going on. <laughs> All right, friends. Remember, we need, we need to be we need to be um, respectful in the chat. So please make sure that we're not putting and just spamming a bunch of numbers in there. We will shut the chat off if we continue to do this. Um, so um, our tadpole, as it comes out, it is um, kind of like it kind of almost looks like a fish, basically. So our tadpole, I'm gonna pretend I'm a tadpole. It kind of has this tail that it can move. And then it has kind of a, a, a circular head, just like this, our tadpole. So they have that nice tail that they can move. And then they have the nice big circular head that they can do or that they that their faces and their mouth is so um tadpoles do can anybody tell me what a tadpole eats is it bugs bugs algae. okay yep. yeah nice lots of algae algae but yeah. good job yeah grasses algae Yes, so they do. They have um, a bunch of, uh, they eat algae and plants mostly, things that are kind of uh, uh, around the water. Um, and that is, there are some tadpoles that do eat other insects and frogs, but for the most part, 
tadpoles tend to eat algae. So um, living in the water, what do they breathe? And how do they breathe? Gills. Gills, great job. Yeah, gills. Oxygen. They breathe and they they do breathe oxygen, but where do they get their oxygen? Water. Great. Yeah, they they get their oxygen from the water. So the way that they're able to do that is by having the gills to be able to get oxygen out of the um the water. And so they're going along, they they don't have any legs, they they have this tail, they just kind of have a big bulbous shape head they only eat algae and they breathe water that's so completely different than anything else what or then uh, when they get older what exactly starts to happen as they are growing into their next stage of the life what usually starts to happen first so you have your tadpole pew, 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 pew. they grow limbs they grow legs great job they grow limbs and they legs so they just they usually grow legs first does anybody know if they usually grow the front legs or the back legs first back back yeah they do usually right. grow the, so so we're back, back. yeah so um some some in-betweens but mostly they are or most of us said right the back legs so you have your little tadpole and then all of a sudden it's like pachow pachow I got legs. Now I'm still a tadpole, but I just have back legs too. Then what starts to happen? What what else happens in their body? Yeah, their front legs. Yeah, so usually our front legs are going to grow out first. So we have this tadpole that's kind of swimming around. Now I, I'm not going to like be getting on the ground and doing this, but just imagine I'm on my side, you know. <laughs> doing that. <laughs> um, they're, so they're swimming around. They're still pretty much eating algae at this point in time. And then what, what is also kind of changing inside of their body? So they have these limbs. They're able to kind of grow these extra bones. But what actually happens inside their body as well? Lungs. lungs yeah they are growing changing the actual shape of how they breathe inside not only are they changing their full skeleton they are truly changing the organs that help them survive as well I mean I don't know about you but like I got really excited when I grew like three inches of hair over a year and here are these frogs over here like <laughs> I got arms and legs and now I have lungs <laughs> It's pretty crazy, the, the amazing stuff that they can do. So they're changing, and then that tail starts to shrink. Now, does the tail fall off? What happens to the tail? So what happens to that tail? It just pops off, just falls off? Oh, we see it. Yeah, it's, it shrinks. It starts to grow in it kind of what happens is it starts to be absorbed by their body and they can actually <laughs> feed. They can use that to, to kind of like feed themselves as it's growing into their body. That's more energy that's being able to take to the rest of their body. So as that tail is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we have our our tadpole with legs and then it kind of can't move like that anymore it's changed its face structure so and it's changed its body structure so it looks like this look at how that is so different they have nice long back legs which is what I believe that is one of the reasons I think that probably the back legs grow first because they have to grow much longer than I me. Mean, look at those tiny little front legs compared to those huge back legs. <laughs> so they're changing their actual inside structure too. And now they don't have that tail anymore. So now how did, how are they going to get around? Ah, right, yeah. 
But before they become a full adult, what are they called? Does anybody know that not a tadpole, not an adult frog, that in between? Froglets, Michelle, it's a froglets. Great job, Michelle. Yeah, you were our first one that said froglets, but now we have a ton of people. Great job, everybody. Froglets, which I think is absolutely adorable, like piglet, froglet. So that in between, kind of this, these stages are what we call froglets. So this is considered a froglet, and this is kind of basically considered, a, this is more to a, an adult frog, but is very close. And then at the end of that life cycle, we have what everybody? Great job. Yeah, adult frogs. Great job. So we and we can kind of see that also in real life. So I have this little it's kind of a plastic block of frog development. One and two would be our first stage of the life cycle that egg. Then we have three and four. It's kind of hard to see the numbers on here. Just like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So <clears throat> I can point. So three and this one, and then even this one where it has these back legs, those are your tadpoles. And then this one right here is going to be your froglet. And then these are your adults. Now this is a really small frog. So frogs can be big, they can be small, um, but they all go through that neat metamorphosis. Now, do you all want to meet? Do we have a question? We have some several questions. Oh, great, yeah. I wanted you to get through the cycle. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll answer so, some questions. All right, so this is a good one. What is the difference between a frog and a toad? Great question. So um, I'm gonna answer part of that now and then also part of it when I bring out my friend. So the easiest way for me to tell, and this is a, my personal way of telling, um, to be like, yes, that is definitely a frog or definitely a toad, is by seeing the eggs. So in frogs, they lay eggs in clumps like this, but with toads, they lay their eggs in a long string. So each egg is right next to each other. They're not kind of like clumped up. There are sometimes some other ways to look at an, an animal or look at a frog, a toad, and be like, that looks more toad and that looks more frog, including kind of the shape of the body. So this is a toad and it has numbers on it. So that's the, um, here we go. So this is a toad skeleton and it's kind of, that face is a lot, um, that face is a lot rounder and kind of shorter. And then those legs are kind of a lot longer and shorter. So remember when I'm showing you some of these things, that's also part of the life cycle too. So everything lives and everything eventually passes away. Frogs and toads don't really live for a super long time. And so because of that, we're able to sometimes find places, we're able to find skeletons, or if people have frogs, they live their whole entire life around or with them and toads, then we are able to use, um, we're able to use things like skeletons to be able to teach about it. Because I don't have an x-ray machine that I can put a live frog under and show you the um, skeleton of it. So when you see things like this, it's not like we hurt that frog. If that frog had its whole entire life, its whole entire life cycle, it went through every single stage, and then the final stage is when it dies. And that is part of the life cycle. So just remember that as you're looking at all of these things. Somebody says, what predator, what are the predators of the frog eggs? Great question. So what are the predators of the frog's eggs? Like almost anything will eat frog eggs that are in the water. Most of the time it's gonna be other fish um, or it's gonna be fish, but every once in a while, it's also um, other frogs eating frog eggs. And that's if they, if they need it, 
or if it's there. And that's why the frogs lay so many eggs is because they know that most of them aren't going to make it all the way. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have another well, question? This one, I'm not sure how, is there any danger than frogs? I'm not sure if they mean okay. frogs in danger or do we, are we dang frogs dangerous for us? I'm not sure. Right. So, um, there are some frogs that can be dangerous to us. Um, and most of the time, the frogs that are dangerous to us are frogs that are poisonous and toads that are poisonous. And so my joke is always just don't go around licking animals. It's just a blanket statement you're going to want to make sure you don't do. It's just don't go around licking animals. Um, and actually, the toad that I'm going to bring out is, is a poisonous toad. Um, so, so yes, you and do they said like poison dart frogs. Well, like poison dart frogs. Yeah, very good. Um, so yes, you do have to, if you ever see one, um, the best thing to do is just to observe it from far away because it can be really hard to tell which one is one that um, could potentially make you sick. Um, but I would say for the most part, we're more of a danger to frogs or other animals are more of a danger to frog than they are to us. So, and even there's, we'll, I'm gonna show you some cool pictures of some frogs that we're helping because they're not doing so well in their environment. These two are pretty cool because they do have uh, pertain to the life cycle. Sure. So do frogs' eyes adapt when they leave the water? <laughs> <laughs> no, these are good questions. <laughs> I mean, I would assume so, but I don't know the exact answer to that. Because <laughs> when you think about it, so my, this would, this is my educated guess on that. Well, they will move, right? Because they're on the side. The yeah, so they board, move. So, so chances down. are some part of them changes as well. But frogs also go underwater and come out of water. So their eyes are probably different than ours anyways, um, to be able to deal with some of that water. But they also have what we call a nictitating membrane, which is basically a third eyelid. And that eyelid goes up and it covers, it's clear, it covers the eye to be able to protect it from the water. Um, so that has to change throughout their life cycle as well. So my guess, my educated guess is yes, their eyes do change. I don't know exactly how um, or when in their life cycle. That is something I will have to look up. And then how do they lose their lungs? Their gills. Excuse me. Their gills. <laughs> that is another thing that is so scientifically crazy that I don't, I wouldn't be able to explain everything about it. So the way that it is, it's in our bodies, there's cells um, and these cells tell everything. They have, they have like this code written in them that tells it what it's supposed to be. So cells in our bodies that are supposed to be um, skin cells, it tells them in that cell that it's supposed to be skin. Then there's also cells that may have that, that code in their body to tell it that it's supposed to be lungs. So in a frog, and then in some time, even crazier, cells can change and it's just chemical reactions. And I don't know the exact chemical reactions, but the, whatever in the chemistry of the cell, um, it tells, it has that code that tells it to be something. So kind of like coding in computers. There could be a code that tells the, the game to do one thing, and then suddenly it could change and tell it something to be something different. So whatever that code is, it will change and it can turn on and off based on the chemistry around it. And that's the most simplified <laughs> answer to that. So inside of their body, they have cells that are telling it to be gills, and then something causes in their body for it to tell it to become lungs instead. All right, was that our, uh, did we have we any have more? We have more, but we can wait. Okay, can awesome. So I'm gonna bring out my toad friend with us. Um, and like I said, just remember, we're being respectful in that chat. We're making sure that we're not um, putting, spamming too much stuff in there because we wanna make sure that we are um, kind to each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we like those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get some gloves real quick. All right, so I have to put on gloves. And the reason I have to put on gloves is because the animal that I'm bringing out is actually
um, poisonous, like I said. I'm also going to be spraying my hand with some of this RO water. And this water is to help kind of make sure that my hands aren't too dry while I'm touching the toad. So the toad that we have today is sugar. And sugar is a cane toad. That's actually where she got her name from is sugar cane. And she is actually the largest type of toad in the world. I don't know what RO water means. Oh, great question. So RO water means reverse osmosis water. And that is just basically cleaner than kind of normal. Um, it goes through a special process that allows it to get even more of any impurities out of it so it's even cleaner. Because these are um, amphibians are very much, um, they're very sensitive. Their skin is very, very sensitive. And because it's sensitive, um, it allows them to kind of take in water and then to kind of breathe through their skin. And so RO water makes sure that when she has it in her skin, that water that's in her skin isn't going to hurt her basically. So, so that goes along with the question, so why are they slimy? Oh, great question. So they are slimy and toads, toads tend to be a little less slimy. So if you can kind of see her, um, that's one of the things people usually say when they look at this, um, or when they're looking at the differences between frogs and toads is toads tend to be a little less slimy than frogs. And part of that is because they, um, aren't around the water as much. They don't need to be around the water as much and they don't need to be as, um, wet all the time. So they are slimy though, because they do need to keep that skin nice and wet or else they can dry out. You can kind of see her, her face kind of moving up and down right there on her, like underneath her chin. And that chin is where she kind of makes that noise. And you might see her kind of like, she looks like she's moving a little bit every once in a while. And she's kind of making a little bit of vocalizations. Now they're hard to see, or they're hard to hear, but that's kind of what's happening if you see her kind of like shaking a little bit. Now look at these beautiful eyes. Can you see them? There we go. So she does, she has beautiful eyes and when she closes them, Every, you'll see she'll close them every once in a while. Sorry, it's, it keeps trying to <laughs> zoom in on something else. When she closes them, um, sometimes you can see that nictitating membrane that we were talking about. All right, so I'm going to hold her a little bit different. And part of the reason I'm going to hold her a little bit different is so you can see even more of her. And this is actually an, uh, a really safe way to hold her because... Um, this, uh, those back legs are really strong and the rest of her body isn't as strong. So you can kind of see this beautiful coloring that's going on, on her body, but on the back, she has these little, these are the, the places where she, um, if she needs to push out her, um, venom that's or her her um poison that's actually where that would be these two things where my fingers are so she's actually she's um she's kind of a little jumpy so i think i'm going to let her go take a little bit of a break but if you have any questions about our toe feel free to let us know why are frogs and frogs cold-blooded why are frogs cold-blooded <laughs> because they are 
<laughs> because they, the, the way that they were created is that they're cold-blooded. Um, and if you think about it, being cold-blooded sometimes is, it's really efficient. So if you're cold-blooded, then you don't have to worry about creating your own heat. We as warm-blooded animals, we have to spend a lot of energy creating our own heat. We have to make sure that we're a certain degrees. If it gets too cold, we have to create more heat. And with um, frogs and toads and other reptiles, they are able to use whatever is around them. And because of that, then they don't have to use as much energy to create that heat. So a lot of times animals that have been around for a really long time, longer than humans have, um, they are cold-blooded because it's more, of a, more efficient for them, basically. So do we have any other questions about my friend the toad? I'm gonna check something real quick. <laughs> so um, how do you know what sex it is? Um, great question. So it's really hard. <laughs> There's nothing that we can really look at them and tell. So um, sugar, I know she's a female because the veterinary told me she's a female. <laughs> um, I can't look at her and tell, I don't know exactly. Um, so they, males and females do look very similar. The best way to tell if it's definitely a female is if you're actually seeing it lay eggs. If you see it lay eggs, then you know it's definitely a female. But other than that, most frogs, um, and toads, one is slightly bigger, but you may never know if that's just a small, a small of the, the certain um, sex or if that's a larger version of it. So really hard to tell. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh yeah, we have a ton. Oh great, yeah. yeah. It's always a very frog interesting people. <laughs> so this one's kind of cool, so, or interesting. So do frogs sometimes eat their own eggs on accident? <laughs> I so I was, I, I was doing this program the other day and I kind of made a joke about frogs and um, so frogs and toads, they're basically like a giant mouth with legs to propel that mouth to whatever they can eat. So I would say it's not necessarily on accident, it's just that they're trying to eat something and it is perfectly likely that they might eat some of their own eggs. <laughs> they're not like the most smart animal in the world, mm -hmm. um, but they do need to eat, and so they will make sure that they find food to eat. Now, Where a lot of tympanic membranes, sugar. What? I told her to cover her tympanic membranes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yes, it can happen, and once again, that is also why they lay so many eggs because if it's not one animal, it's probably going to be another one. Any other questions? All right. Do frogs like natural ponds better than man-made ponds? That's so that's, a, that's an interesting yeah. thing that I don't necessarily know the 100% answer to, but I will tell you that even like the, um, the sides of roads, when it rains really hard and then there's kind of that water that's running down the side of the road, um, frogs will hang out in there as well. So I don't think that they're super picky. But the biggest thing is how clean that water is. So if the water is not super clean, then that means <laughs> that they're gonna want to, um, then, then they can be, get sick from all of the bad pollution and stuff that's in that water. So um, they're very, very likely to get hurt or sick if something happens in an environment, which is why we really, as a science community, want to learn about amphibians so that we can tell they're called canaries or they're called bio indicators. They indicate what the, the health of the habitat is. And so because of that, we actually do a ton of research and are trying to help certain frogs survive because of it. Um, and we're going to do that in a second. So does anybody have any, did we have any other last questions before so I answer that? So there is a question, um, is sugar native to NC? Oh, great question. So when somebody actually said it, I saw somebody scroll through that they're, they're a pest in Florida. Oh yeah, so, yeah, so. sugar, which here, I'll do this. <clears throat> you might like that a little bit better. So sugar, can we see a little bit? <laughs> yes, there there we go, sorry there's a bright light. Um, sugar is a pest in Florida. She is also a pest in Australia. 
one of the biggest things that can't happen with cane toes is that they became what we call an invasive species. Oh, she jumped on the other one. Um, they became an invasive species. So that means they were introduced into um, Australia from South America. And um, the reason they were introduced is because people thought, sorry, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get it so you can see her, but I'm not trying to not also hit the microphone. Um, people thought that a good way to help save the sugar cane in Australia was to take toads from South America and release them into Australia. So they took the sugarcane toads from South America, this was in the 1930s, and then they released them in Australia to eat the cane toads. And when they did that, the cane toads didn't eat the beetles, the sugarcane beetles. Instead, they ate everything else. <laughs> Not only that, they took over places where frogs were, native frogs were supposed to live, and they took over because they're able, they're, they can be aggressive, they are poisonous, and they also are really big so they can cover a lot of distance. And so because of that, we learned as scientists to not do that anymore. <laughs> so introducing species into different habitats is not good, and that's why they are considered a pest in Florida as well. Um, any last questions about sugar? Well, we have a ton of questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I think a lot of the ones, I think we got the ones they want us to answer on air. I so did see. We I have, a, we have a, a smart team of people hopefully be able to answer those questions if we don't get Yeah, to if we don't get to everything, we do have our team. Um, we wish we could answer every single question, but like I said, we have over 300 people in here um, and, and you can ask multiple questions, so it just, it might not be able to happen. I did see a question that was asking about like different colors of frogs, um, and frogs are all different colors. There's mm -hmm. green frogs, there's blue frogs, there's yellow frogs, there's so many different colors of frogs. But here in North Carolina, specifically, because I know that this area a little bit better, um, most of our frogs are kind of green and brown color. We do have the gray, uh, gray tree frog as well. Um, that's kind of gray and dark gray, which is very cute, called the Cope's gray tree frog. All oh, right, <laughs> this is what it looks like, the Cope's gray tree frog. Pretty small, they hang out on trees. And all of the tree, or all of the frogs make different calls as well. So one thing that you can do that's kind of fun is you can learn the frogs in your area and their calls and then go outside and see if you can tell which one is which. It's a really fun way to kind of um, listen. And they tend to come out right around um, dusk, so right as the sun is setting. So what I wanted to show you some really cool pictures too because, like I said, here at the zoo, we actually try to help frogs and toads, because they are so important to their environment, we're trying to help them get a head start on life. So we're helping them get through that life cycle, being in a safe place. So Miss Linda, if you could put up and screen share our um, PowerPoint real quick, I'm going to tell you the story of the Carolina gopher frog, which here is the picture of the Carolina gopher frog. They are pretty cute. And they are pretty small as well. They're, this is a nice blown up picture of it, but they're pretty small. They're kind of, I would say, I don't know, like two inches long. So um, the Carolina gopher frog lives in the sand hills. So if we can go to the next slide, that's where the sand hills are. Miss Linda. <laughs> There. there we go. That's kind of where the sand hills of North Carolina are. So right around um, Fayetteville and um, Lumberton and even Wilmington. So that is an area that um, we find a lot of pine forests and they like to live in the pine forests. All right, if you can go to the next slide, Miss Linda. All right, what stage of the life cycle is this?
Lincoln Science is pretty smart. They know their stuff. <laughs> Great job, everybody. We're seeing a ton of people. Yeah, eggs. This is our egg stage of the life cycle. And you can see on the left, there's that nice big clump of eggs, which means it's a frog and not a toad. All right, Linda, if you can go to our next pit, our next thing. So this is um, what we call a mesocosm or mesocosm. And this is actually where we, um, we take some of the eggs from the, um, from the native um, habitat in the sand hills. We usually take about the, same, uh, about the same amount that will actually usually be eaten. Um, so like we kept saying, they lay so many eggs and most of them don't make it. So we take a, a, a small bit of those eggs and we put them back in these, me these mesocosms or mesocosms and they are protected from every single part um, of the environment around them and we're able to feed them and we're able to make sure that they get through the life. So next slide. Here is uh, Chris Shupp and he is, um, he is, has a bag of those, those eggs and he's getting ready to put them into the um, mesocosms. And you can go to the next slide, Linda. All right, what stage of the life cycle is this? Great nice. job. Great job, everybody, tadpole or polywog, exactly. Um, so this, we're allowing them to get through that life cycle. They're able to get, get to tadpole. And then what is our next slide? All right, so there we go, everybody. Froglet, good job. This is what a froglet looks like of the Carolina gopher frog. We also call that, like I said, a metamorph as sometimes, so. Um, but froglet. Great job, everyone. Everybody's doing so great. Um, all right, so our next slide, Miss Linda. So here we have our adult frogs. Everybody, good job. Now they also have this, um, what's that called now? Transmitter. Transmitter, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they also have transmitters that they can put on some of them. And the reason they're able to put that transmitter on them is because they are. Um, we want to see, we want to make sure that they stay alive and if they make it. So if this is truly helping them. And so if they have that transmitter on, it's just kind of like a belt um, and it does eventually fall off and they are able to see where all of these frogs are and see if us being able to give them a safe place to go through their life cycle um, actually truly does, does help them. All right, Linda, if you can go to the next slide. So here is Shup, Mr. Shup, and he is once again um, releasing those adult frogs back into their native habitat in hopes that they will survive. So he's taking those frogs that we had in those mesocosms and he's going back out into the sand hills and then releasing them back out into the wild. So if we can go to our last screen, there we go, good job. Um, they, the, here is a cute one that we, um, we caught a picture of the other, not so long ago. And our hopes is that we are going to see even more of them. And this is not a nest per se, this is actually where they live, they live underground. So they live in these holes left behind um, old trees and such. So that is, Miss Linda, if you can come back to me, <laughs> that is our hope is that we can help some of these frogs get through every single stage of their life cycle. And so we'll have more of them that survive as adults um, by the eggs that they laid. Do we have any quick questions before we? Oh, good. I had somebody asked this a gazillion times, so I better answer it. So why are they bumpy? <laughs> the toads? I'm assuming the toads. That's what they meant. Um, their skin, yeah, their skin is kind of bumpy, and a lot of people think that that's kind of one of the differences between frogs and toads. But there are some the, some frogs that are, are still pretty bumpy as well. The gopher frog is bumpy. Yeah, did, we saw the picture of that gopher frog. That gopher frog is also pretty bumpy. And uh, one of the reasons bumpy may help is it's able to have more surface area to keep kind of that water on it so that they can stay um, 
they can stay wet longer, basically, especially with toads since they're not around the water as much. Somebody asked, um, where did it go? I thought it was a pretty good question. Um, why, like, why does uh, sugar need the poison? What does it poison do for? You? Oh, great question. So, why, why would an animal need poison? What do we think? So, why would an animal need to have poison on its body, or like an animal to be venomous or something like that? Protect. Yeah, yes. to protect, defense, protection. Great job. It does. It's a great defense mechanism. So it's an adaptation that they have to help protect themselves from other animals that are trying to eat it. And if you think about it, in South America, where they're from, the cane toads are from, there's a lot of big animals that might be trying to eat them. In Australia, there's not really the same type of animals, or some of the big animals not, might not be living where they're living. So they, they adapted to needing to have that poison a little bit more in their natural habitat than in their, their current, or in um, Florida and in uh, Australia. But well, this is just a, I just had to, I want to read this because I think it's pretty cool. So Cool Jay says, thank you very much. We watched this weekly and really enjoy it. We appreciate all that we do. Aww. We thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. We put a lot of work into this and we hope that you all enjoy it as much as well. So um, if we, did we have any kind of last quick questions? Before said, uh, can you tell the name? It's the Carolina Gopher Frog. You want to know Carolina what frog? Oh, so yeah, Carolina. Carolina gopher frog. And the reason it's called the Carolina gopher frog is because in South Carolina, there's a tortoise called a gopher tortoise, and it makes um, dens in the ground. And the Carolina gopher frog really enjoys finding those little, those little holes and then living in them. So they tend to live in gopher tortoise um, burrows, basically. And um, gopher tortoises tend to live in Go for it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's where they go. Okay. Um, so what's the topic next week? Oh, next know? week. Miss yeah. Nikki is going to be doing the topic next week. Um, so Miss Nikki, what are we doing next week? We're doing Animal Mythbusters. So next week, we hope you all join us through, we have um, a plan through the rest of May. Um, and we have some really cool things that are coming up. Next week is going to be all about busting some myths with some animals. We're gonna learn about senses. We're gonna learn about, I forgot now all the things that I put in. <laughs> I told her. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> animal how adaptations, we animals. Yeah. how we care for animals. Lots of great things. So we are super excited to bring those to you um, on Thursdays at one o'clock. So I'm gonna um, have to hop off um, the, the chat for now. But thank you so much for coming in, um, watching our digital classroom, and we hope to see you again next week. And everybody stay safe out there. Bye!